So for this week's lesson, we're going to talk about legato on classical guitar. And um, I've talked about this so many times in various videos, but I guess I don't, I don't have an actual like one video dedicated to the subject. It kind of comes up in every single piece we play and in the beginner method book a lot. But today what we'll do is we'll have a more comprehensive look at playing legato on the classical guitar. Um, there's a number of links below the video in the description uh, for my technique books and my method books. The first method book is free, so if you haven't checked that out, um, just follow those links. So what we're going to do today is this. We're going to talk about five main areas connected to playing legato on the classical guitar. First one is listening skills, like kind of a psychological approach to it. Um, the right hand technique involved in playing legato the left hand technique involved in playing legato, synchronization of the two hands, and then um, sound production and room acoustics and how that affects your legato as well. Before I talk about those five areas, I just wanted to say the, how I teach beginners um, to play legato. So the first thing we usually do when I'm teaching a beginner to play legato is we contrast it with staccato because we need to define the term but if I say oh legato is smooth and connected uh, that doesn't necessarily mean anything unless you contrast it with something else so if we take a basic um, scale I'm going to use a closed C major scale today but you can use an open C major scale if you've reached that in my beginner method book this would be legato This would be staccato. So you heard in the legato version, from one note to the next, the sound is connected. It's not that you're hearing both notes at the same time, but they're literally kind of forming one musical connected line. Staccato you're hearing the note disconnect between each one, so it's no longer connected. So um, when you're practicing legato, you might want to practice some staccato and try to bring the two as far away from each other as possible. Just make them as contrasting as possible so that you have a real high quality legato and a real sharp detached um, staccato so that you clearly know what the difference is and how to play them. But let's talk about playing them. So first thing, we just kind of talked about that, the psychological approach of being knowing what it is and, and using your ear for that. So by contrasting it with staccato, your listening skills are a little bit more tuned to catching it. Um, some students can't hear when they're not legato because they don't know what legato necessarily is. And therefore, our psychological approach and our listening skills are a really important part in playing legato. You have to be aware of it at all times. And when you're practicing, you must correct it and make sure that you're doing it. <clears throat> right hand legato playing, let's talk about that. So if we take a single string, as soon as the finger touches that string, if, it's ring if the string is vibrating already, as soon as the finger touches it again, it's going to stop the sound. So if I play with my I finger, and I put my M finger on the string, it's going to stop that sound. Right? There's some re other strings are vibrating. But essentially, as soon as you put another finger down on the string, it cuts it from being legato, right? So when we play staccato on a single string, we place the next available finger on the string immediately afterwards. That stops the sound. So therefore, if we want to play legato, we must make sure we spend as little time on the string as possible so that our fingers are just going right through the string when they do the stroke. Through the string, spending as little time on it as possible so the string is allowed to vibrate um, and not be muted by the next finger. So there's a fine line between when you're a beginner, because in order to, it's like sometimes to get students to produce sound, we get them to pre-plant on the string, and they really feel it before playing, but that reduces their legato. So obviously this is a long-term thing you must practice. As you get more advanced, your legato will also advance along with your progress. But when you're playing legato, you must pass through the string, spending as little time on the string as possible. 
So that's right hand legato. Same thing with the thumb, right? If you put your thumb back on the string right away, it stops the sound. So we must make the stroke go straight through the string, spending less time on it. Left hand legato is a pretty easy concept to cover. You must hold one note down until you hear the next note. Um, sometimes a, a misconception would be um, when we're crossing across strings that we must hold our fingers down, but the only thing that matters when we're talking about legato is the actual sound. Guitar technique is how we you know, approach playing legato, but it's not the end all. Keeping your fingers down doesn't always make sure that it's legato. We must be hearing the next note. So when you play from C to D, you must hear them connect. If you don't hear them connect, then it's not legato. So keeping your finger down until the next string or next note is heard. And you have to be careful on guitar because sometimes we forget when we go across the strings this way to hold the previous note on the previous string. Very often students will play, you know, they'll lift off this one before hitting that one, maybe because it feels cramped or something, or they just forget. But we must hold down any note until we hear the next note so that it's truly a legato line, a connected sound. So that's right hand legato and left hand legato. Now, the other factor is synchronization between the two hands. Let's say that I'm really focusing on right hand legato, but I put a, my, my left hand finger back on the string. It will stop the sound. So if I don't synchronize these two fingers to hit the string at the same time, it won't be legato. So these two fingers, when they place, they have to be synchronized. If they're not, then we'll get something either the right hand will go down too soon and mute the sound, or the left hand will go down too soon and mute the sound. So we must synchronize our motion. And again, difficult for beginners to do, but as you progress and get more um, confident with your technique and more muscle memory and um, dexterity in your fingers, the more that you'll be able to synchronize the two hands. But that's, that's a common factor. But don't worry too much about the synchronization issue because if you really work on your left hand legato and you really work on your right hand legato, by the time you're good at those two things, you'll probably be synchronizing quite well. But nevertheless, that's something to always consider, to carefully consider that you have to make, you have to make both, both movements at the same time. And you can feel that when you play, if you go slow enough that you can purposely feel both motions happening at the same time. You have to go slow though. Later on, you won't have to think about it. It'll just be part of your muscle memory. It won't be something you have to think about at all, but you might have to a little bit when you're starting out. The last thing I wanted to talk about is sound production and room acoustics. Um, if you don't produce much sound on, on the guitar, then the sound dies away. Like we play a very percussive instrument. So by the very nature of, of the guitar, it is not very legato. If you want a really legato instrument, um, the voice, the human voice, is extremely legato. We can connect multiple notes. The violin can do multiple notes within one bowing. But the classical guitar is very percussive, right? Like each note pops so much and then immediately starts dying away. So you get lots of like ping, 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 ping. Lots of like notes just uh, really popping out. It's very obvious when the mics are really close. Um, so what we need to do is we need to get this guitar, this whole resonating body of the guitar vibrating enough that lots of sound production is happening because the more sound there is, the more the sound will um, continue to ring in the body of the instrument as we progress to the next note. So sometimes when we're doing um, certain things, you know, like you can't play legato from this note to this note because you have to let go of the string and move your finger up to a whole nother location on the string. You can't actually play it legato, but if you have enough resonance going in the instrument, you know, you can, that's not the greatest note to jump to, but um, you can create enough resonance that it, the appearance of legato happens because there's sound in the room and in the resonating body of the instrument. 
The other thing is the room acoustics. Um, if you take a microphone and record yourself in a very dry, small room, um, it sounds like it's it's shocking. Microphones like will make it so dry because they don't pick up all of the room, right? So it'll be very not legato. But if you go play in a church and you play the same way and the microphones are a little bit back and they're picking up lots of the big church and the big hall or performance hall, um, it'll sound much more legato. So room acoustics have to do with it, have to do a lot with it as well. In the end, you're only as legato as your technique allows. Like, you know, the room acoustics, you can't rely on room acoustics to create your legato for you. That's a cheat. That's a cheating move. Um, when you see someone lay on way too much um, reverb on their sound product, on their software, they could be covering up for their lack of legato sometimes. Um, not in a bad way. I mean, it's okay to do that. But nevertheless, um, you don't want to use it as like a crutch, right? You want to make sure that you're super legato in the driest, smallest room. And then when you go into a church or a performance hall, you'll be even more legato and it'll sound beautiful. So listening skills, you must know the difference between the two um, styles of playing, legato and staccato. Um, right hand legato, left hand legato, synchronization between the two hands, and sound production, producing enough sound to get everything vibrating and ringing out. Those are the ways that we um, play legato on the guitar, but it's a very long journey. It's something that you can work on from the very first year that you're playing, or the first day that you're playing, all the way to, you know, if you've been playing for 30, 40 years, you can continue to improve on your legato. And as you play more difficult music, it'll be more challenging to play legato across difficult chord changes, for example. So it's a lifelong endeavor, so you don't want to get bogged down by it, but nevertheless, you do want to work on it a lot, both in your technique and your repertoire.